Welcome, dear friends, to a tale of love, sacrifice, and redemption that proves sometimes the greatest riches in life are found in the most unexpected places. Enjoy the story. The sleek midnight blue Maserati purred as it glided down Fifth Avenue, turning heads and drawing envious glances from pedestrians. Behind the wheel, Ethan Blackwood III lounged with the casual arrogance of someone who had never known want. At 24, he was the golden boy of New York's elite, heir to the Blackwood fortune, with looks that graced society pages and a charm that opened every door. As he cruised past the high-end boutiques, Ethan's mind wandered to the charity gala he was supposed to attend that evening. Another night of champagne, fake laughter, and his mother's not-so-subtle hints about suitable marriage prospects. He sighed, running a hand through his perfectly coiffed hair. Sometimes he wondered if there was more to life than this endless cycle of parties and pretense. Lost in thought, Ethan almost didn't see the blur of movement that suddenly darted into the street. His foot slammed on the brake pedal, tires screeching against asphalt. The Maserati came to a jarring halt, mere inches from a young woman who stood frozen in the crosswalk, eyes wide with shock. For a moment, time seemed to stand still. Ethan stared at the girl through the windshield, his heart pounding. She was nothing like the polished socialites he usually encountered. Her clothes were simple and a bit worn. Her hair pulled back in a messy ponytail. But there was something about her, a spark in her eyes perhaps, that made it impossible for him to look away. Snapping out of his daze, Ethan threw the car into park and leaped out. Oh my God, are you okay? He called, rushing to her side. I'm so sorry I didn't see you. The girl blinked, seeming to come back to herself. I, I'm fine, she stammered, then glanced at her watch and groaned. Oh no, I'm going to miss my bus. Ethan followed her gaze to see a city bus pulling away from the curb half a block away. Without thinking, he grabbed her hand. Come on, I'll drive you wherever you need to go. It's the least I can do after nearly turning you into a hood ornament. She hesitated for a moment, eyeing him warily. But another glance at her watch seemed to make up her mind. Okay, fine. I need to get to Grand Central and fast. I can't miss this train. As they climbed into the Maserati, Ethan couldn't help but notice how out of place she looked against the leather interior. I'm Ethan, by the way, he said flashing his most charming smile as he pulled back into traffic. Olivia, she replied, clutching her worn backpack to her chest. Olivia Jensen, and seriously, thanks for the ride. I don't know what I would have done if I'd missed that bus. No problem at all, Ethan said smoothly, weaving through traffic with the skill of someone born to navigate New York's chaotic streets. So where are you headed in such a rush? Hot date? Olivia laughed, a sound so genuine it startled him. Hardly. I'm heading home for the summer, just finished my junior year at NYU, and I cannot wait to get out of the city for a while. Oh yeah? Where's home? A little town called Millbrook. It's upstate, about halfway between here and Albany. You've probably never heard of it. Ethan shook his head. Can't say that I have. What's it like? As Olivia launched into a description of her hometown, all rolling hills, apple orchards, and everybody knowing everybody else's business, Ethan found himself hanging on her every word. This was a world so far removed from his own, it might as well have been on another planet. Before he knew it, they were pulling up to Grand Central. Olivia grabbed her bag and hopped out, then leaned back in through the open window. Thanks again, Ethan. You're a lifesaver. And then she was gone, disappearing into the crowd of commuters. Ethan sat there for a moment, feeling strangely bereft. Then, on an impulse he couldn't quite explain, he pulled into a parking spot and jumped out of the car. What the hell am I doing? He muttered to himself as he jogged into the station. But he couldn't shake the feeling that if he let Olivia walk out of his life now, he'd regret it forever. He spotted her at the ticket counter and sidled up just as she was paying for her fare. So Millbrook, huh? He said casually. Sounds fascinating. Mind if I tag along? Olivia's jaw dropped. Are you serious? Don't you have, I don't know, important rich person things to do? Ethan grinned, already feeling more alive than he had in years. Nothing that can't wait. Come on, show me how the other half lives. It'll be an adventure. And as he bought his own ticket to Millbrook, ignoring the disapproving voice in his head that sounded suspiciously like his father, 
Ethan had no idea just how much of an adventure it would turn out to be. The train ride to Millbrook was unlike anything Ethan had ever experienced. Instead of the first-class luxury he was accustomed to, he found himself wedged into a cramped seat next to Olivia, surrounded by a motley crew of commuters, students, and what appeared to be a traveling bluegrass band. As the cityscape gave way to rolling countryside, Ethan peppered Olivia with questions about her life, her studies, her dreams. He learned that she was studying to be an elementary school teacher, following in the footsteps of her mother and grandmother, that she worked part-time at the campus library to help pay for school, that she had a dog named Rusty waiting for her back home, who she swore was the smartest canine in all of New York State. So what about you, Mr. Maserati? Olivia asked, nudging him with her elbow. What's your story? Ethan hesitated. For the first time in his life, he found himself reluctant to trot out his usual pedigree. Oh, you know, he said vaguely, just your average trust fund kid trying to figure out what to do with his life. Olivia raised an eyebrow. Average, huh? Is that why you're slumming it on public transportation to some podunk town you've never heard of? Hey, I'll have you know this is a vital anthropological study, Ethan protested with a grin. I'm expanding my horizons, broadening my worldview. Uh-huh, Olivia said skeptically. Well, prepare to have your mind blown, city boy. We're almost there. As the train pulled into Millbrook Station, little more than a platform with a weather-beaten shelter, Ethan felt a strange mix of excitement and trepidation. What was he doing here? What would Olivia's family think of him showing up unannounced, and why did he care so much what they thought anyway? But there was no time for second thoughts. Olivia was already bounding off the train. Her face lit up with the joy of homecoming. Ethan grabbed their bags and followed, blinking in the late afternoon sunlight. The platform was nearly deserted, save for a middle-aged woman with Olivia's eyes and smile. Mom! Olivia cried, dropping her backpack and rushing into the woman's arms. Oh, sweetie, welcome home, the woman said, hugging her daughter tight. Then she spotted Ethan hovering awkwardly behind them. And who's this? Olivia turned, looking slightly embarrassed. Oh, right, Mom, this is Ethan. He, uh, gave me a ride to the station and then kind of followed me here? Ethan stepped forward, summoning every ounce of the charm that had been drilled into him since birth. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Jensen. I hope you don't mind me tagging along. Olivia's told me so much about Millbrook. I just had to see it for myself. Grace Jensen looked him up and down, taking in his designer clothes and perfectly styled hair. Then she smiled, a warm, genuine expression that immediately put Ethan at ease. Well, any friend of Olivia's is welcome in our home. Come on, you two. Dinner's waiting, and I want to hear all about your adventures in the big city. As they piled into Grace's battered pickup truck, Ethan found himself wedged between mother and daughter, breathing in the unfamiliar scents of hay and engine grease. The truck rattled down winding country roads, past picturesque farms and orchards heavy with early summer fruit. So, Ethan? Grace said as they turned onto a gravel driveway. What brings a nice boy like you all the way out to our neck of the woods? Ethan opened his mouth, then closed it again. How could he explain the restlessness that had been gnawing at him, the feeling that there had to be more to life than the gilded cage he'd been raised in? How could he tell them that in the few short hours he'd known Olivia, she'd made him feel more alive than he had in years? I guess I just needed a change of scenery he said finally, and Olivia made Millbrook sound so charming I couldn't resist. Grace nodded sagely. Well, you're in for a treat. It's not much, but it's home. As the truck pulled up in front of a cozy farmhouse, complete with a wraparound porch and a tire swing hanging from an ancient oak tree, Ethan felt a strange sense of homecoming. It was nothing like the mansion he'd grown up in, with its manicured lawns and army of staff. But there was a warmth here a lived-in feeling that tugged at something deep in his chest. Welcome to Casa Jensen, Olivia announced, hopping out of the truck. Hope you're not allergic to dogs because Rusty's probably going to. Her words were cut off by a joyous bark, and suddenly a golden blur was bounding across the yard. Rusty, a shaggy mutt of indeterminate breed, nearly bowled Olivia over in his excitement. Ethan watched, bemused, as Olivia rolled around on the grass with her dog, laughing and cooing 
as if they'd been separated for years instead of months. It was so different from the stiff, formal greetings he was used to. So, real. All right, you two, Grace called from the porch. Wash up and come set the table. Ethan, honey, I hope you like pot roast. As he followed Olivia into the house, Ethan felt a sense of anticipation building in his chest. He had no idea what the next few days would bring, but for the first time in a long time, he was genuinely excited to find out. Little did he know, his impromptu adventure was about to change the course of his life forever. Ethan woke the next morning to the sound of a rooster crowing. For a moment he was completely disoriented. The bed was narrower and lumpier than he was used to. The ceiling sloped at an odd angle, and sunlight streamed through a small round window he didn't recognize. Then it all came rushing back. The near accident, the train ride, Olivia's warm, welcoming family. He was in the Jensen's attic, on a rickety old camp bed that creaked every time he moved. Ethan stretched, wincing as his back protested. He was used to Egyptian cotton sheets and memory foam mattresses. Not this, rustic accommodation. And yet, he couldn't remember the last time he'd slept so soundly. The smell of coffee and bacon drifted up from below, making his stomach growl. Ethan pulled on his clothes from the day before, wincing slightly at the wrinkles, and made his way downstairs. The kitchen was a hive of activity. Grace stood at the stove, flipping pancakes with practiced ease. Olivia was setting the table, her hair still damp from the shower. And at the center of it all was a man Ethan hadn't met yet. Tall, weathered, with Olivia's eyes and an impressive salt-and-pepper beard. Well, look who's finally up, the man said, his voice gruff but not unkind. Thought you city boys like to sleep till noon. Ethan felt his face flush. Good morning, sir. I'm Ethan. Thank you so much for letting me stay. The man, who Ethan assumed must be Olivia's father, looked him up and down, then nodded. Frank Jensen, hope you don't mind getting your hands dirty, son. We've got a lot of work to do today. Olivia rolled her eyes. Dad, he's a guest. You can't put him to work on the farm. But Ethan, sensing a challenge, straightened his spine. I'd be happy to help, sir. Just tell me what you need. Frank's mouth twitched in what might have been the ghost of a smile. We'll see about that. Sit down and eat first. Can't work on an empty stomach. As they dug into a breakfast that put any five-star brunch to shame, Ethan found himself relaxing into the easy banter of the Jensen family. They talked about neighbors he'd never met, local gossip he couldn't hope to follow, and the myriad tasks that needed doing around the farm. It was a world away from the stilted, formal breakfasts of his childhood, where conversation revolved around stock prices and social engagements. After breakfast, Frank led Ethan out to the barn. All right, city boy, let's see what you're made of. We've got fences that need mending, hay that needs bailing, and a tractor that's being temperamental. Where do you want to start? Ethan, who had never so much as changed a tire in his life, felt a moment of panic. But then he caught sight of Olivia watching from the porch, a hint of a challenge in her eyes. He squared his shoulders. How about that tractor, sir? I'm pretty good with engines. Frank raised an eyebrow. That so? All right then, have at it. The next few hours were a blur of grease, sweat, and increasingly creative swear words. Ethan's designer jeans were ruined, his hands were covered in cuts and calluses, and he was pretty sure he'd pulled muscles he didn't even know he had. But as the old tractor finally sputtered to life, he felt a surge of pride unlike anything he'd ever experienced. Well, I'll be damned, Frank said, genuine surprise in his voice. You actually did it. Not bad for a city slicker. Ethan grinned, wiping his forehead with the back of his hand. Thanks, sir. I guess I'm a quick learner. As they walked back to the house for lunch, Olivia fell into step beside him. Color me impressed, she said, bumping his shoulder with hers. I thought for sure Dad was going to send you packing after an hour. Oh, ye of little faith, Ethan teased. I'll have you know I'm a man of many talents. Olivia laughed a sound that was quickly becoming Ethan's favorite in the world. Is that so? Well, don't get too cocky. We've still got a whole afternoon of chores ahead of us. As they worked side by side for the rest of the day, mending fences, feeding chickens, and even mucking out stalls, Ethan found himself marveling at how natural it all felt. 
Sure, his muscles were screaming and he probably smelled like a barn, but he felt more alive than he had in years. That night, as they all sat on the porch watching the sun set over the fields, Ethan realized something that both thrilled and terrified him. He didn't want to leave. The thought of going back to his life in the city, with its endless parties and meaningless pursuits, felt hollow compared to the simple, honest work he'd done today. As if reading his mind, Olivia leaned over and whispered, Penny for your thoughts, city boy. Ethan looked at her, really looked at her, taking in the way the setting sun turned her hair to fire and made her eyes sparkle. In that moment, he knew he was in deep trouble. I was just thinking, he said slowly, that I've never felt more out of place, and yet more at home than I do right now. Olivia's smile softened. I know what you mean. It's not much, but it's... Perfect, Ethan finished for her. Their eyes met, and for a breathless moment, Ethan thought he might just lean in and... All right, you two, Frank's gruff voice broke the spell. Time to turn in. We've got an early start tomorrow. As Ethan climbed the stairs to his attic room that night, his mind was whirling. What was he doing? He had a life waiting for him back in New York. Responsibilities. Expectations. He couldn't just throw it all away for a girl he'd known for two days and a lifestyle he knew nothing about. And yet, as he drifted off to sleep, his dreams were filled with golden fields, the scent of fresh-baked bread, and Olivia's laughing eyes. The next few days passed in a blissful blur. Ethan threw himself into farm life with an enthusiasm that surprised everyone, especially himself. He learned to milk cows, albeit with many messy mishaps, helped repair the old tractor, discovering a knack for mechanics he never knew he had, and even tried his hand at baking bread with grace, producing something that was charitably described as rustic. But more than the tasks themselves, it was the sense of purpose, of truly earning his keep, that thrilled Ethan. For the first time in his life, he went to bed each night exhausted but deeply satisfied, and then there was Olivia. With each passing day, Ethan found himself falling harder. It wasn't just her beauty, though that certainly didn't hurt. It was her quick wit, her infectious laugh, the way she saw the world with such open-hearted wonder. She challenged him, pushed him out of his comfort zone, and made him want to be a better man. On the fourth night of his stay, as they sat on the porch swing watching fireflies dance in the gathering dusk, Ethan finally worked up the courage to kiss her. It was soft, sweet, and over far too quickly. But as Olivia smiled up at him, her eyes shining, Ethan knew he never wanted to kiss anyone else ever again. Ethan, she said softly, what are we doing? You have a whole other life waiting for you back in the city. He shook his head. I don't care about that life. This right here, this is real. You're real. Olivia bit her lip. But your family, your job? They'll understand, Ethan said with more confidence than he felt. And if they don't, well, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. But reality had a way of asserting itself, whether Ethan wanted it to or not. The next morning, as he was helping Frank repair a fence, his phone, which he'd all but forgotten about, began to buzz incessantly in his pocket. With a sense of dread, Ethan pulled it out to find dozens of missed calls and messages from his parents, his assistant, and various business associates. The most recent was a terse text from his father. Office. Now. No excuses. Ethan's heart sank. He knew he couldn't put off the real world forever, but he'd hoped for just a little more time in this paradise he'd stumbled into. With heavy steps, he made his way back to the farmhouse to break the news to Olivia. She took it better than he'd feared her eyes sad but understanding. You have to go, she said. It wasn't a question. Ethan nodded. But I'll be back, he promised. This isn't goodbye, Liv. It's just... See you later. As Frank drove him to the train station, Ethan's mind was already racing with plans. He'd explain everything to his parents, make them understand. He'd find a way to balance his responsibilities in the city with his new life here. It would work. It had to. But as the train pulled away from Millbrook, Olivia's waving figure growing smaller in the distance, Ethan couldn't shake the feeling that he was leaving a piece of his heart behind. 
The sleek elevator in Blackwood Tower seemed to take an eternity to reach the top floor. Ethan tugged at his tie, feeling like it was strangling him. After days in worn jeans and work boots, the crisp suit felt alien and restrictive. The doors slid open to reveal his father's executive assistant, a pinched-faced woman who had terrified Ethan since childhood. They're waiting for you, she said, her tone making it clear just how much trouble he was in. Ethan squared his shoulders and strode into the massive corner office. His father, William Blackwood II, stood at the floor-to-ceiling windows, his back to the room. His mother, Sophia, perched on the edge of a leather sofa, her face a mask of worry and disappointment. So, William said without turning around, his voice cold. The prodigal son returns. Ethan winced. Dad, I can explain. Explain? William whirled around, his face flushed with anger. Explain how you disappeared for days without a word? How you missed three crucial board meetings and a dinner with our biggest investors? How you left your mother sick with worry? I'm sorry, Ethan said, meaning it. I should have called. But something came up and... Something came up? Sophia interjected, her voice quavering. Darling, what could possibly be more important than your family, your future? Ethan took a deep breath. I met someone, he said. Her name is Olivia, and she's... She's amazing, Mom. She showed me a whole different way of life, one that's simple and honest and... Oh, spare me, William scoffed. Don't tell me you've fallen for some country bumpkin sob story. What is it this time? Let me guess, her family farm is in trouble and only your money can save it? It's not like that, Ethan protested, his temper flaring. Olivia doesn't care about money. She doesn't even know who we are. She's smart and kind and hardworking. Enough! William slammed his hand on the desk. I don't care if she's Mother Teresa. You have responsibilities, Ethan, a legacy to uphold. I didn't build this empire from nothing just to watch you throw it all away on some... Some summer fling. Ethan clenched his fists, struggling to keep his voice level. It's not a fling, Dad. I love her. A heavy silence fell over the room. Sophia let out a small gasp. William's face went from red to purple. Love, he spat. You've known this girl for what, a week? Don't be ridiculous. You know nothing about love or responsibility or what it takes to make it in the real world. Maybe I don't, Ethan shot back. But I'm learning. And I know that what I feel for Olivia is more real than anything I've ever experienced in this, this gilded cage. William's eyes narrowed dangerously. I see. Well, if that's how you feel, you have a choice to make. You can either grow up, accept your place in this family and this company, and forget about this little adventure of yours, or you can walk out that door and never come back. But know this, if you choose her, you choose to give up everything, your trust fund, your position, your inheritance, all of it. Ethan felt like he'd been punched in the gut. He looked to his mother, hoping for some support, but she just shook her head sadly. Please, darling, Sophia pleaded. Be reasonable. You have such a bright future ahead of you. Don't throw it all away on a whim. Ethan closed his eyes, his mind racing. Could he really give it all up? The wealth, the security, the only life he'd ever known? for a girl he'd just met and a world he barely understood? But then he thought of Olivia's smile, of the satisfaction he'd felt after a hard day's work on the farm, of the simple joy of a home-cooked meal shared with people who genuinely cared for each other. And suddenly, the choice didn't seem so difficult after all. He opened his eyes, meeting his father's gaze steadily. I'm sorry, Dad, but if that's my choice, then I choose her. I choose a life that means something. William's face hardened. Then you're no son of mine. Get out. Ethan nodded, a strange sense of calm washing over him. He turned to leave, then paused at the door. I do love you both, he said softly. I hope someday you'll understand. And with that, he walked out of Blackwood Tower and into an uncertain future. The train ride back to Millbrook felt both endless and far too short. Ethan's mind raced with doubts and fears. What if Olivia thought he was crazy for giving everything up? What if he couldn't hack it as a real farmhand? What if his father was right and this was all just a naive fantasy? But as the familiar landscape of rolling hills and orchards came into view, Ethan felt a sense of peace settle over him. 
Whatever challenges lay ahead, he knew in his heart he'd made the right choice. He hadn't told Olivia he was coming back. Part of him worried she might try to talk him out of it if she knew what he'd done. So when he showed up on the Jensen's doorstep, a single duffel bag in hand, and hope in his heart, the look of shocked joy on Olivia's face made every sacrifice worth it. Ethan? she gasped. What are you doing here? I thought. He cut her off with a kiss, pouring all his love and certainty into it. When they finally broke apart, both breathless, he rested his forehead against hers. I'm here to stay, he said simply. If you'll have me? Olivia's eyes filled with tears. But what about your family? Your life in the city? Ethan shrugged. That life, it wasn't real. This is real. You're real. And if you'll let me, I want to build a life here. With you? For a moment Olivia just stared at him, her expression unreadable. Then slowly a smile spread across her face. You're crazy, she said, laughing through her tears. Absolutely crazy, and I love you for it. The next few months were a whirlwind of challenges and triumphs. Ethan threw himself into farm life with gusto, determined to prove his worth. There were plenty of mishaps along the way, like the time he accidentally let the chickens loose and spent hours chasing them around the yard, or when he nearly flattened Frank's prized tomato plants with the tractor. But there were victories, too. He mastered the art of milking cows, learned to drive a stick shift on Frank's old pickup, and even managed to fix the perpetually leaky roof on the barn. With each small accomplishment, Ethan felt his confidence grow. Frank, who had initially been skeptical of the city boy's ability to adapt, gradually warmed to Ethan. One evening, as they sat on the porch cleaning their tools after a long day's work, Frank gruffly admitted, You're not half bad, son, for a Blackwood? Ethan's head snapped up. You knew? Frank snorted. Course I knew. Your family's been in the papers often enough. Didn't say anything, cause I figured you had your reasons for keeping quiet. And I wanted to see what you were made of, without all that baggage. Ethan felt a lump form in his throat. And? Frank clapped him on the shoulder. And I think you might just make a decent farmer yet. It wasn't all smooth sailing, of course. There were days when the work seemed endless and thankless, when Ethan's muscles screamed and his hands bled from blisters. There were moments of homesickness, of doubt, of wondering if he'd made a terrible mistake. But then he'd look at Olivia, see the pride in her eyes as she watched him work, feel the warmth of her hand in his as they walked through the orchard at sunset, and he knew he was exactly where he was meant to be. As summer turned to fall, Ethan and Olivia's relationship deepened. They talked about the future, about Olivia finishing her degree, about modernizing some of the farm's operations, about the family they hoped to have someday. And on a crisp October evening, as they sat on a blanket in the apple orchard watching the harvest moon rise, Ethan pulled out a small velvet box. It's not much, he said apologetically as he opened it to reveal a simple gold band. Nothing like what I could have given you before, but it was my grandmother's, and... Olivia silenced him with a kiss. It's perfect, she whispered against his lips. Yes. A thousand times yes. As they lay back on the blanket, wrapped in each other's arms and dreaming of the life they would build together, Ethan sent up a silent prayer of thanks for that fateful day in the city, when he'd nearly run over the love of his life. A year passed in a blur of hard work, laughter, and love. Ethan and Olivia were married in a simple ceremony in the orchard, surrounded by friends, family, and more than a few curious locals who couldn't quite believe that Olivia Jensen had managed to snag herself a real-life billionaire. Former billionaire, Ethan would always correct with a grin. Life settled into a comfortable rhythm. Ethan threw himself into learning every aspect of running the farm, while Olivia finished her degree online and started teaching at the local elementary school. They were happy, truly happy, in a way Ethan had never thought possible. But there was always a lingering sadness, a shadow on their joy. Ethan had tried reaching out to his parents several times, sending letters and leaving voicemails that were met with stony silence. He missed them, missed the relationship they'd once had, before money and expectations had poisoned everything. So when Ethan spotted a sleek black town car pulling up the dusty driveway one crisp autumn afternoon, 
his heart leapt into his throat. He'd know that car anywhere. It was his father's. Olivia came to stand beside him on the porch, slipping her hand into his. You okay? she asked softly. Ethan squeezed her hand. I guess we're about to find out. William and Sophia Blackwood emerged from the car, looking like fish out of water. William's immaculate suit was a far cry from the worn jeans and flannel shirts that were the uniform around these parts. Sophia teetered on impractical heels, looking around with wide, uncertain eyes. For a long moment, nobody moved. Then Ethan cleared his throat. Mom, Dad, this is… unexpected. William's face was a mask of discomfort. Yes, well, we were in the area for a business meeting and thought, that is, your mother insisted. Sophia stepped forward, her eyes brimming with tears. Oh, Ethan, my boy, we've missed you so much. And just like that, the dam broke. Ethan found himself engulfed in his mother's embrace, breathing in the familiar scent of her perfume. Over her shoulder, he saw his father awkwardly extend a hand to Olivia. You must be the young lady who stole our son's heart, William said stiffly. I'm William Blackwood. This is my wife, Sophia. Olivia, bless her, took it all in stride. It's wonderful to finally meet you both, she said warmly. Won't you come inside? I just put on a fresh pot of coffee. As they settled around the kitchen table, William looking comically out of place in his tailored suit, an awkward silence fell. Ethan could see his father taking in the modest surroundings, the worn but clean furniture, the vase of wildflowers Olivia had picked that morning. Finally, William cleared his throat. Son, I... We... That is to say... What your father is trying to say, Sophia interjected gently, is that we're sorry. We were wrong to try to force you into a life you didn't want. We were so focused on our own expectations that we couldn't see how unhappy you were. Ethan felt a lump form in his throat. Mom, Dad, I... Let me finish, William said, his voice gruff with emotion. Son, when you left, I was angry, furious even. I thought you were throwing your life away on some foolish whim. But then... He paused, seeming to gather his thoughts. Then I started seeing the changes in the company. The employees you'd worked with. They missed you. They talked about how you always treated them with respect. How you saw them as people, not just cogs in a machine. Ethan blinked in surprise. He'd never thought his father paid attention to such things. William continued. It made me realize that maybe, just maybe, you understood something about life and business that I'd forgotten along the way. And then we started hearing rumors about you, about how you'd thrown yourself into this new life, how you were working harder than you ever had before, how you were happy. I am happy, Dad, Ethan said softly. Happier than I've ever been. Olivia squeezed his hand under the table, and Ethan felt a rush of love for her. Sophia leaned forward, her eyes shining. We can see that, darling, and that's why we're here. To tell you that we understand now. And to ask, if you'll have us back in your life. Ethan felt tears prick at his eyes. He looked at Olivia, who nodded encouragingly. Of course, he said, his voice thick with emotion. Of course I want you in my life both of you. The tension in the room dissipated like morning mist. Suddenly, everyone was talking at once. Sophia wanted to know all about the wedding she'd missed, while William peppered Ethan with questions about the farm's operations. Olivia, bless her, fielded it all with grace and humor. As the afternoon wore on, Ethan couldn't help but marvel at the strange turns life could take. Here was his father, William Blackwood II, titan of industry, sitting at a worn kitchen table drinking coffee out of a chipped mug, and he was smiling, really smiling, as Olivia regaled him with the story of Ethan's first disastrous attempt at herding sheep. When it came time for his parents to leave, Ethan walked them to their car. William paused before getting in, turning to his son with an uncharacteristically hesitant expression. Ethan, he said, I know I can't undo the hurt I caused, but I want you to know I'm proud of you, son. You've built a good life here. A real life. Ethan felt his throat tighten. Thanks, Dad, he managed. That, that means a lot. As the town car disappeared down the dusty road, Ethan felt Olivia's arms wrap around him from behind. You okay? She asked softly. 
he turned in her embrace, pulling her close. Yeah, he said, surprised to find he really meant it. Yeah, I think I am. That night, as they lay in bed, Olivia propped herself up on an elbow, studying Ethan's face in the moonlight. So, she said, a mischievous glint in her eye. Now that you've made peace with your parents, does this mean you're going to run back to your life of luxury? Ethan pretended to consider it. Hmm, let's see. Go back to boring board meetings and stuffy galas. Or stay here with the most beautiful, amazing woman in the world, doing work that actually means something. He pulled her down for a kiss. No contest, Mrs. Blackwood. You're stuck with me. Olivia laughed against his lips. Promise? Promise, Ethan said, sealing it with another kiss. As they drifted off to sleep, wrapped in each other's arms, Ethan marveled at the journey that had brought him here. From pampered heir to hard-working farmer, from lonely playboy to devoted husband. It hadn't been easy, but every hardship, every callus on his hands, every early morning and late night, had been worth it. Because here, in this simple farmhouse, with the love of his life by his side, Ethan Blackwood had finally found his true fortune. Three years later, the sun was just peeking over the horizon as Ethan made his way to the barn, a spring in his step despite the early hour. As he pushed open the heavy wooden door, he was greeted by the familiar sounds and smells of the farm, the soft lowing of cows, the rustle of hay, the earthy scent of well-tended animals. Morning, ladies, he called cheerfully to the cows as he set about his morning milking routine. It still amazed him sometimes how natural this all felt now. The boy who once couldn't function without his morning latte now rose with the sun and whistled while he worked. As he finished up in the barn, Ethan heard the sound of an approaching car. Curious, he stepped outside, shielding his eyes against the morning sun. A sleek SUV was making its way up the drive, looking comically out of place among the beat-up trucks and tractors that usually populated the farm. Ethan grinned, recognizing the vehicle immediately. William Blackwood II stepped out of the car, looking far more at ease in his casual slacks and button-down than he had on that first visit three years ago. Morning, son, he called, waving a file folder. Thought I'd bring these projections by in person. Didn't wake you, did I? Ethan laughed. Dad, you know we've been up for hours already. Come on in. Olivia's just finishing up breakfast. As they walked toward the house, William's eyes roamed over the farm with obvious pride. In the years since that first tentative reconciliation, Ethan's parents had become increasingly involved in farm life. It had started small, William offering business advice, Sophia helping with the farm's bookkeeping, but it had grown into something much more. Now, Blackwood Organic Farms was a thriving enterprise, combining Ethan and Olivia's passion for sustainable agriculture with William's business acumen. They supplied high-end restaurants across the state with premium organic produce and had even started exporting their famous apple cider to specialty stores nationwide. But more importantly, they'd found a balance, a way to merge Ethan's two worlds into something new and wonderful. As they entered the farmhouse, they were greeted by the controlled chaos of a family breakfast. Olivia was at the stove, expertly flipping pancakes with one hand while balancing their six-month-old daughter, Sophia, named after a very flattered grandmother, on her hip. Two-year-old William Frank, a compromise that had made both grandfathers beam with pride, was gleefully smearing syrup all over his face at the table. Grandpa! Little William cried, launching himself at William's legs with sticky hands. William scooped him up without hesitation, seemingly unconcerned about syrup on his designer shirt. There's my boy! Have you been helping your dad with the chores? As the family settled in for breakfast, conversation flowing easily between farm business and family anecdotes, Ethan felt a familiar wave of contentment wash over him. This was what he'd been searching for all along, he realized. Not just love, not just purpose, but a true sense of belonging. Later that morning, as he stood on the porch watching his father push little William on the tire swing, Olivia came up beside him. Penny for your thoughts, city boy, she teased using the old nickname that had long since lost its accuracy. Ethan pulled her close, dropping a kiss on the top of her head. Just thinking about how lucky I am, 
he said. How different my life could have been if I hadn't almost run you over that day. Olivia laughed. Well, I for one am very glad you did. Although, she added with a mischievous grin, I still think you owe me for that near-death experience. Oh, really? Ethan raised an eyebrow. And how exactly do you propose I make it up to you? Olivia's eyes sparkled. Well, I was thinking, maybe it's time we gave little Sophia a sister, or brother, or both. Ethan's heart swelled with joy. Mrs. Blackwood, are you suggesting we expand our family farm? That's exactly what I'm suggesting, Mr. Blackwood, Olivia said, rising up on her tiptoes to kiss him. What do you say? As Ethan kissed his wife, the sounds of his children's laughter and his father's deep chuckle drifting across the yard, he knew with absolute certainty that he'd made the right choice all those years ago. This was his fortune. This was his legacy. And he wouldn't trade it for all the billions in the world.